If you're struggling with period problems, PMS, infertility, and brain fog, a progesterone deficiency could be to blame. And in this video, I'm going to cover the top eight signs of a progesterone deficiency and what you can do about it. Hi, I'm Madeline McKinnon. I'm a hormone nutritionist and author of the Hormone Type Cookbook. And progesterone is a topic I love to chat about because I feel like it is often an overlooked hormone imbalance. A lot of women are struggling. So progesterone imbalances can be common because in this day and age, we're exposed to a lot of estrogen. So we get estrogen in through our environment, we get it in through our food, we produce it in our body. But then progesterone, on the other hand, is a little bit more tricky because we actually need to ovulate to produce our progesterone. So after the egg is released in ovulation, this temporary structure forms in the ovaries called the corpus luteum. And this temporary organ is responsible for producing your progesterone in the second half of your cycle. And progesterone can only be high for 10 to 16 days. So let's get more into a lot of these symptoms. Often a lot of these symptoms are a result of having estrogen and then not enough progesterone to counteract the effects of this high estrogen. So one of these symptoms is having a heavy period. Estrogen will make your uterine lining grow and progesterone helps essentially to ripen and maintain the uterine lining and it stops it from growing too much. So if you're having a heavy period, you're losing more than 80 mils of blood during an entire menstrual cycle or using more than 16 regular size pads or tampons. Second sign is if you have spotting or breakthrough bleeding at any time during the cycle where all of a sudden you're not supposed to be getting your period period, but then there's some blood and you don't know what's going on. This could be a lot of bleeding or it could be some light spotting. Often this is because the progesterone isn't high enough to maintain the uterine lining in that second half of the cycle. It's a really clear sign that you might be low, especially if you get spotting, for example, three to four days before your period starts. It just means that progesterone is just not quite high enough to be at the level to maintain that uterine lining. The third sign of low progesterone is either having really long menstrual menstrual cycles or really short menstrual cycles. So long I'm talking about more than 35 days, this could be a sign that you're not ovulating or you're ovulating later and you just don't have enough progesterone to balance out the estrogen. Because remember, progesterone can only be produced in adequate amounts for 10 to 16 days. Or on the other hand, you could run into having very short cycles. So if your cycle is less than 23 days, it would also mean that after you ovulate, you're not producing progesterone long enough. So you could either have shorter cycles, less than 23 days would be a sign of low progesterone, or you could have long cycles, more than 35 days. So the fourth sign of low progesterone could be PMS, anxiety, or depression. Progesterone is actually super important for calming the brain and maintaining balanced moods in the second half of your cycle. So really, if you're experiencing really low moods, more depression, that could be a sign of progesterone issues. On the other hand, what I covered in the high estrogen video, you can check it out there, is if you have really high estrogen, you might have more PMS rage and PMS irritability. But more of this PMS depression, anxiety can be more from a progesterone deficiency. The fifth sign is unexplained infertility. I know it can be so challenging if you've been struggling to conceive and your doctor has told you, you know, nothing is wrong. But unfortunately, what I've seen multiple times is many clients being told they have unexplained fertility, but not having their progesterone properly tested. And progesterone does need to really be tested multiple times during the luteal phase. I wouldn't just rely on testing on day 19 or day 21. You want to test it on multiple times, perhaps using a test like the Dutch cycle mapping. So you can actually tell if you are low in progesterone, as I've just seen this multiple times, clients having multiple miscarriages, you know, going to their doctor, asking why, why is this going on? And then not realizing that it was caused by a progesterone deficiency. The sixth sign is having multiple miscarriages. If you've had one miscarriage, I wouldn't worry about low progesterone, but if it's happening multiple times, you need to get that checked out properly. 
but in that first trimester, the placenta hasn't taken over the progesterone production. So often we're relying on your corpus luteum, that temporary structure to produce enough. And if there just isn't enough throughout the pregnancy, you might really benefit from getting proper treatment for low progesterone. Symptom number seven is night sweats. So if you are getting waking up, you're drenched in sweat in the luteal in that second half of your cycle, I would look into progesterone, can be super common. Uh, number eight would be brain fog. So if you notice, you know, you're not focusing as much at work, you're walking into your freezer to try and figure out what you need to get and then you forgot once you open the freezer why you're gonna get it. Low progesterone could be the cause of this especially if you're in those perimenopause stages, because after the age of 35, your progesterone can start to make a slow decline. So after going through all of those signs, all those symptoms, the obvious question is what can you do about it? I would encourage you to look at getting proper testing done. So the first thing that you can do is request a progesterone test at five days after confirmed ovulation. If you have a normal 28 day cycle, that would look like doing your test uh, between day 19 or 21, you could do a blood test. But if you're struggling, you know, with a lot of these progesterone symptoms, especially infertility, I think you could really benefit from doing a Dutch cycle mapping test, which is a urine test that tests your progesterone throughout your entire cycle. Because even if your progesterone is normal on that day 19, it's possible that it could be dropping too soon after that. So if you need more information, definitely let me know in the comments. And also make sure if you're really enjoying this content, subscribe to this video and hit like. It really helps with the algorithm and spread these videos around. Uh, the other thing though that I really want to talk about for a progesterone treatment is nutrition. Nutrition is actually key. I think a lot of people are low in progesterone because they just don't have the nutritional building blocks to support and keep healthy levels up. So if you do want more information on that, I've actually put together this amazing free food-based protocol that teaches you what foods you can eat in a week and what supplements you can take to get all the nutritional building blocks needed to boost progesterone. So if you want, you can download that. It's completely free. Uh, the link is in the description. So definitely grab that. And I will talk to you on another video. Definitely let me know in the comments if you have any questions and if you found this information valuable. So thanks for tuning in and I'll talk to you soon. And if you want to learn more about causes of low progesterone, you can also check out my video up here.